What's going on YouTube? Bryce, your favorite AMP IA and Part 147 instructor here again at the airport and the 172 project is very quickly coming to a close. So what I need to do today is finish cleaning the glue off the windshield. I did that all day yesterday. I didn't film it. Sorry. Got to finish cleaning the glue off the windshield. I have to finish um, putting panels or screws in all the panels to make sure they're tight and I need to service the nose strut and put the end number on it. So today I'm gonna to talk about things you can do to improve the life of your engine. Now some of these things might seem common sense, some of them may surprise you, I don't know, but stick around and I will get into that. I would like to start this video by saying that nobody is more opinionated than an aircraft mechanic on the internet, and I am no different. I would also like to let you know that I am making this video like two weeks earlier than you are seeing it, but if you're watching it today, it's my birthday. So wish me a happy birthday. So the first thing that I'd like to bring up is gonna sound incredibly obvious. And that is you should be doing your routine maintenance. Now, what I mean by routine maintenance is you need to make sure that you're doing your 50 hour oil changes every 50 hours and not going a little long on them. Oil changes are an incredibly routine part of aircraft maintenance and ownership, but they often get overlooked as being important when, in my humble opinion, I think they're one of the most important things for the aircraft engine. My second point will be this, how you are doing the oil changes. Well, my first question I wanna ask you is this. Are you doing an oil analysis, something like a Blackstone soap sample? And Blackstone does not sponsor the channel, they're just somebody that I know of because I've used them in the past. What an oil soap sample or an oil analysis is, is a spectromical analysis where they actually burn the oil and observe the flame, noting how much of each particular metal is in that oil. So if it's green, that's obviously burning copper or bronze and nickel and lead. And they're determining or they're using the burning of the oil to determine what parts of the engine are failing. If you're not doing oil analysis, it's something that I would strongly recommend as a mechanic to help give you a better idea as your engine wears over time, what parts specifically are breaking down. So you've done your oil analysis. You've taken an oil analysis and you've sent it into the lab. My next tip comes for you from what oil you should be using. Now, again, this is my opinion that certain oils are better than others. Imagine that. There is an additive you can use in your oil system called CamGuard. What is CamGuard? Well, CamGuard is an additive that is put in the oil that helps the oil itself stick to the camshaft. It is required by AD in a couple of Lycoming engines. However, it's not required by AD for any Continental engines. But I want you to understand, you can still use it in any engine. Now, the good news is that you don't need to buy cam guard specifically. Certain aircraft oil manufacturers like AeroShell include it in some of their oils. For AeroShell, it would be AeroShell W100 Plus or AeroShell 20W50 Plus. Plus on that oil, oil, noting that it does in fact contain cam guard. I know Philips XC something has it as well, but I don't remember Philips exact part number, so I don't want to quote it and be wrong. The reason that I am saying, however, that it might be a good idea for you to use it in your aircraft is the additive helps the oil stick to the camshaft. I already said this. If the engine is going to be sitting for long periods of time, like, I don't know, a week or two weeks, without flying, it's a good idea to have that additive helping hold oil on the cam. Because if the oil comes off of the cam, it allows moisture to get into the engine. Well, moisture gets in the engine anyways, but it allows that moisture to collect on the camshaft and start the corrosion process. I used to work for a flight school and we had one engine that had cam guard in it as required by an AD. And we found the additive to be so beneficial that we just started putting it in all of the engines, to be honest. Which will now lead me to my fourth point. Third point? Fourth point. I think it's my third point. Your aircraft's engine is not particularly robust. The technology of this engine is from the 60s and the 70s. It still uses magnetos. So, as weird as this sounds, yes, the engine will take lots of abuse, but you need to baby it. When you start the engine, you should let it warm up completely before you take off. 
when you land, especially if the engine is turbocharged, you should give the engine a chance to cool back down before you shut it off. In extremely hot conditions like we're currently experiencing this summer in Texas and Arizona, you want to be careful not to fly at full power settings and high rates of climb, getting the engine really warm. So in one way, you can abuse it, but you do want to baby it, keeping an eye on your temperatures and your pressures, as they say. I am sorry for the noise. We are at an airport, but this does all bring me to my final point. If you do these things, I am not guaranteeing that your aircraft will fly past TBO, but you want to give your engine every single chance it has to. And that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I don't know how long it was. I do appreciate you for sticking around. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a separate video on how to install a tail number because I'm actually about to install a vinyl tail number on this aircraft. As always, like, comment, subscribe, and be easy.